Welcome to Flavors and Knowledge. I'm your host, Steve Cascione. With me is our five-star chef, Walter Potenza, known on Federal Hill, but not only Federal Hill, uh, around the country and around the world for his knowledge of food and his style. Walter, uh, we are back you. in the saddle again. Thank you. Good you're, to see you. You're very kind to me. Oh, usually. thank you. That's why and, I, yeah. I like to work with you because I gave a full compliment. <laughs> and we are coming from this beautiful designer showroom, Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath on uh, Jefferson Boulevard. What an amazing kitchen. Well, I want to thank them. Uh, they've been really great with us. You I think, think I could they're, take they're this kitchen home? Very accommodating. Yeah, this is actually very easy to work in this setting. So <laughs> I want you to stop and see this because if you're into yeah. cooking like I am, I think you will enjoy anything that is around here. Right. So what are we going to start with today? Well, we have an itinerary. Our show is called Flavors and Knowledge. The idea is to deliver flavors and, of course, the knowledge of the food and everything that is connected with that. Our itinerary takes us to Tuscany today. Oh, perhaps, Tuscany. Right, one of the most, uh, I think, a glorious Italian region. Isn't it the fifth big, biggest region in Italy, Tuscany? It's it is. huge, right? It encompasses a lot of areas like Florence. Of course, and of course, historically speaking, Florence had its own domain for a century before the uh, 1807, before Italy was begin. The unification mm -hmm. was divided in among seven to ten duchies right. and um, uh, counties. So. And they're known for very simple foods, right? I think my grandmother used to say cucina povera, right? Cucina povera because the Tuscany is a cuisine uh, based on agriculture. But there is another cuisine in Tuscany, the, the cuisine of the castle and the wealthy, mm. which uh, based and again during the Renaissance, this cuisine never really went out is the case of the De Medici family, which okay. ruled yes. the Tuscany oh, for yeah. years, yeah, and yeah. many as the Montefeltro, and many other families who maintained their cuisine within their own uh, surroundings. So we do ribollita, reboiled, a dish that is never consumed on the day that you make it, but you go back the day after, and I'll show you uh, of why. And then maybe you can help me out with a little side dish, like a beet salad, sure, all right? I'd so be I'll glad to do that. Use a typical pan. And of course, the, the fat of choice is always an extra virgin. Extra virgin being that uh, the oil is being uh, used on its first press. An extra virgin as the base, Stephen, Tuscan olive oil, uh, an olive called Frantoio, yeah, which is popular in the area. Color, yeah. Right. We'll begin, Stephen, with what we call a soffritto of uh, fresh Italian parsley and garlic combined. Okay. And I cover the pan so it doesn't go all over the stove. Okay. In the meantime, what I don't want to do is burn the garlic. Right. We use the trilogy, celery, carrots, and onion. Onion okay. go first. Yep. White onions. Onion, white onions is yep. fine. Because what we need to do here, Stephen, is to remove the sugar out of the onion, which is fundamental for the construction of a dish. Okay. Every dish that you build and cook in starts with the first three minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you keep adding, adding new flavors and so on. So. We'll do this on low fire. Again, the beauty of an onion is that it gives a little bit of sugar. Every one of the vegetables that we add to a dish have their own little importance. A carrot has a better carotene. Mm -hmm. a, a celery adds a little bit of iron. All these, uh, uh, should I say, um, saltiness from the earth are important in creating the dish. And another thing about Tuscany, they have a lot of hilly terrain. That's right. And I think that's one of the reasons why the grapes grow so well, right? For Absolutely. Yeah. Little carrot. Little carrot. And we begin this cooking process. And then we'll do the celery. Okay, so this is the base of your dish. That's easy. Typically, these dishes cook for a long time. And uh, the Tuscans are called bean eaters. Because they like uh, to consume an incredible amount of beans. And they have a variety of ways to cannellini cook them. Cannellini beans, right? Like cannellini. Yeah. They cook them near the fireplace. They put them in a flask. They cook them in a bottle in right. olive oil and rosemary and garlic. So there's all kinds of uh, uh, ways of cooking beans for a Tuscan. They so is love that where the pasta fagioli came from? There's the white pasta fagioli yeah. comes from Tuscan. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. And then uh, they won't add tomato to it. This is uh, one of those soups that don't take uh, a broth. You could really? use a vegetable broth, but... Ordinarily, Stephen, they use water. Is so how one... do you get the flavor by just using water? Is it because well, the idea the is that, the idea is that we have already four or five ingredients yeah. here, and every one of them have their own flavor right. that they're going to extract, their own mineral. Okay. So the key is to have all these flavors come out, and then we'll adjust it 
with salt. What's this now? Cabbage? This is Savoy cabbage. Savoy cabbage. Savoy cabbage, which is the curly cabbage. Incidentally, it has about 30 to 40 percent less gas than a typical uh, mm -hmm. large cabbage that we use on St. Patrick. Also, this dish calls for a black kale called the lacinato, which right now it's not really available in Rhode Island. We are substituting it with a typical kale that everybody would understand. That's so. very healthy kale, Good. loaded with minerals. This is as simple as one, two, three. How much water? We started with a little bit, watch. Just enough to begin the steaming process. And we cover it. Okay. And we keep it like this for a few minutes until all those vegetables uh, have wilted, okay? Good. For over 37 years, Garden Hills Fruit and Deli in Cranston has been your neighborhood market. Garden Hills offers the highest quality choice certified Angus beef, the freshest produce, and delicious sandwiches served in the old world tradition. Stop in for all of your tailgating and playoff party needs. We have the freshest selections of meat ready for your grill. We can cater any event, pick up, or we'll deliver to you. Since 1981, Garden Hills Fruit and Deli has been a trip to Italy for your senses. Welcome to the RI Kitchen and Bath Seminar Series, where you can learn the ins and outs of kitchen and bath remodeling and design from the experts themselves. Get inspired by seeing the latest products and designs in our beautiful showroom floor. So today's topics, we're going to go over kitchen and bath design trends, um, just a few things that we're going to touch on, and then different levels of remodeling, um, budgeting, and then we're going to get into the 10 steps to a successful remodel. I'm Joni and Dave from Bristol, Rhode Island, and we've come here to uh, Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath uh, seminar because we are starting a planning for redoing our kitchen and half bath laundry room. This is our second visit that we've done here and we really enjoy it very much and we're definitely going to use Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath because they take care of everything. It's important to have somebody, you know, working with you in this time to really help guide you through all of those decisions there are to make. Sometimes people are a little overwhelmed by how many decisions there really are. You know, we are a very well established company. We've been in business for 29 years. Um, we have kitchen and bathroom modeling down to a science, so we're very experienced in terms of a code requirements and safety regulations that need to be followed. We also have, you know, an award-winning team of designers here. You know, we really offer people a lot of expertise and peace of mind in, you know, getting these projects done. Visit RIKB.com for a list of the upcoming seminars and to reserve a seat for the next event. Or come to our showroom floor located on Jefferson Boulevard in Morley. Welcome back to Flavors and Knowledge. Uh, we're going to go from a five-star chef oh. to a half-star oh, chef. <laughs> He's going to show me. I love salad. That's and you fun. know what? And you, you told me about beet salad. And people sometimes are afraid of beets. I don't know why. They're afraid of the flavor. Well, children are. Uh, yeah. They love it because they get messy with their hands. Okay. But in so, this case, this I, looks I, I easy. Give, I give you some ingredients okay. here. You have a red onion. So, right, so let's start begin. With that. Uh, yep. Just like any marinade, you begin with a red onion. Okay, put some red onion okay. in. A red onion. And then you begin with a liquid. So it would be a little, a little bit, bit of, of a, apple vinegar in yep. this case. Okay. Yeah, a little bit more. Good. And some olive oil. I'm going to do extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. And you blend it. Okay. You blend this up. Good. It's easy so far. We got some greens in here, a little bit of parsley. I put a little parsley, yeah. yeah. I like to have that kind of a, the chlorophyll in a plate a little bit. Okay. Uh, salt now and we pepper. Put a little bit of uh, yeah. tomato. Salt and pepper. All right, some salt and pepper, yeah. sure. Oh, I can smell that vinegar. It smells good. Yeah. What kind is that? Apple. Oh. Nice. Apple vinegar, you okay. do the tomato. So these are? Cherry tomato, grape tomato. Yeah, yeah you can yeah. use any kind of tomato. You Whatever you like. This. Yep. The fewer the seeds, the better, okay. you know? Okay, yep. Like that. Mix so that you up. make the base, right? Yeah, that's easy. Okay. Now the beets? Yeah, let this marinate for a few minutes. Okay. Pretty colors, too. Yeah, and while we do that, uh, I'll take you back here to, to show you exactly how far we are. Uh, looks like it needs so, more water, huh? Yeah, it's going down in size. But right now, what I have here, I have some chopped tomatoes, Stephen. Ooh, nice. Okay. So we had that. Any kind of tomatoes? 
Well, usually the greener the better. You don't want overripe, believe yeah. it or not. Okay. You want them a little better unripe, okay? Right, right, right. So this is the base right now. That looks amazing. And it looks like a vegetable stew. Yeah. So there is nothing to it, but you can hit it with a little bit of salt just about sure. now. Okay, I can do that. The colors are beautiful, as you can see. Nice and vivid. Good. A little pepper? No pepper on this, no. Okay. We just didn't explain to you why. So right. we'll do a little bit of uh, water again. And we're going to do a little tomato puree here, which you have. Uh, you can nice. use any type. Mm -hmm. You can use your favorite one, the one that you make at home. I know you, you well, have I a, like, you know, the San secret, Marzano. The San Marzano, yeah. great tomatoes. Yeah. They're the finest that we have in Italy. Mm. So this is what we have as a base. And the ribollita, again, as I said before, we can add beans at any stage if you have beans that are already pre-soaked overnight but that's a lot of work let chefs do that there are some great quality beans today that come and can and we want to make sure that you have a good lifestyle good healthy cooking yeah. in in your life without really spending that much time like i do every single day so <laughs> you make sure that you pick one of those tomatoes uh, it's a low in sodium no okay you rinse it well and you Cover keep it. on going all I right keep on going on this going back to my salad yes <laughs> Beets. Uh, beets next. Time right now. All yes. right. Go ahead. Put some beets in here. Mix them. Yeah, you can mix okay. them with two spoons. See now, I like beets. Some people don't like beets. I don't know why. No, I know. Why do they get a bad rap? It smells good. Isn't it beautiful? Oh yeah, this is nice. Nice work. Thanks, chef. This is easy. Half star chef. Excellent. <laughs> and now we can. On a plate. You can play it out right here. Okay. I'll move it in front of you. Mm. Use this. I will. And uh, now this is the part that you got to be careful. You can't put it around the edges. You can't. It's got to go right in the uh, middle. You can pour. Don't do this to me, please. Uh, <laughs> you can. If I get it on the edges, he'll get nervous. You can. <laughs> and then you'll see a different that's side of for Chef you. Walter. No, that's <laughs> so you do this a little bit at a time. Okay. You do the, the largest pieces first, yeah. and then you continue with the little ones. How's that? You're doing a good job. Yeah, professional. <laughs> yeah. It looks good enough to eat, you know, believe it or not. <laughs> and this beautiful beet salad is going to be finished with some uh, seeds, in this case, a uh, pumpkin. Pumpkin. And we have some uh, dried uh, cheese here that you can use any type, especially goat cheese. Good quality goat cheese crumbled up here on the beet will be very, very satisfying. And I continue with my ribolita. We add a little bit more water to our soup porridge, as we call it. Okay. And I'll steal some of your salt sure. here. I'm, I'm making a masterpiece here. Any vegetable soup usually don't take black pepper. And this is the case with ribolita, only because it will show on the bottom of the plate when you serve it. So we're just gonna go with uh, this process with just a good amount of marine salt or kosher salt if you don't have it. Can I do the seeds or you want me to wait? No, no, you can, continue. All right. Yeah, be gentle, I mean, don't just throw, uh, yes, beautiful. Oh yeah, very nice. Huh? Well, that's, who's better than that? Lovely. And then the cheese last. It smells good. Scarborts? It's a scamorza in this case, but we can use again any other uh, cheeses that that you wish, you just arrange it around to make it look beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Sure. I wanted to go back a little bit on the importance of bread in many of the dishes. After the Second World War in Italy, many of the foods that were created were created out of necessity. Italy was on the verge of being rebuilt, and so many of the dishes uh, created in farms and in agricultural setting were based on bread. In the case of Tuscany, bread is important, and specifically in this particular dish, Stephen, because uh, uh, in the Middle Ages, the Pope imposed a high tax on salt. Really? And the Tuscans had a rebellion, refused to pay the tax, and refused to use the salt. And from the rest, the remaining four or five hundred years in Tuscany, there is a bread called pane sciapo. Without salt? Exactly. Really? Yes, yes. And pane sciapo is... Bread and Tuscans don't mind. They have, uh, they've been used to they've that. They've adapted to it. Yeah. And you know what? It's probably it. better for them health-wise because I think we use too much salt in this country. I think so. And specifically, the, probably the wrong salt that has been uh, stripped of all its nutrients. We certainly need salt to function in our body, but there are a variety of salt. And uh, as you know, Italy produces, especially in Sicily and Puglia, some of the finest salt in the world.
Okay. You like the sea salt? Fan of that? I like sea salt. I like to use sea salt, especially when we cook pasta yeah. or rock salt. When yeah. I cook pasta, I yeah. put a little bit inside. And uh, this is, will be completion. We're going to pour this inside, and then this gets baked in the oven. Oh, wow. Okay, so the bread absorbs all of the liquid. Mm -hmm. And the day after, when it's rewarmed, so to speak, uh, it cuts like a porridge. Nice. Because the liquid has been all absorbed. absorbed okay? Yeah. Good. How's so, my salad look? Check this it looks out. Looks beautiful. Huh? Uh, it's wonderful. Did I do so a good we job? Can do, we can put it here. <laughs> look at that. It's lovely. Very nice. Okay. Nice work. Thank okay? you, sir. Good. So I'm going to shut this off. This is pretty much done. And we're going to... I have a, a terracotta pots and a ribolita. It usually is served in terracotta. So you broke the bread up into bits. Yeah, yeah. Pieces. This is stale bread. You can utilize your stale bread from yeah. the day See, before. See, that's what my grandmother did. She made something like this, and she they would use the leftover Italian bread. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they never wasted anything. No. I can remember that. The yeah. colors are very nicely put in, too. Yeah, it's, a, it's flavorful. We have a, all of the nutrients expressing themselves right in this dish. Mm -hmm. There is nothing here. Imagine making a dish that has water as a main content. No, that, that surprises me, but I can see what you mean. And, uh, and again, this is going to be... Now, do you top it with anything? Cheese? Nothing. nothing? No cheese. No? No. no. And okay. ribolita, you usually don't. But again, then a lot of the foods that came out of Italy have been readapted here by our own taste. We are a culture in this country who loves cheese. So we fundamentally make the cheese an ingredient that transforms the food so that it's palatable for us. Mm. Uh, Sometimes I, mean, I think we use too much cheese. This is going to get baked. The reason why it's, it's consumed the day after is again because it gets recooked. Okay. So, so you bake have, it the day of, right? And then you let it sit. This gets chilled. Okay. Then, it, let's say tomorrow, we assemble, we bake it with the bread, and then we serve it once with a spoon, and all the liquid goes away. We can finish it certainly before serving with the, an extra version over the top, Stephen. Yeah. Okay. Great job, Walter. Oh, easy enough. Italians love three things. They love their food, they love their family, and they love their wine. I'm not going to put those in order, but it's very important when you're eating to have the wine that complements the dish. So we're here at Grapes and Grains in Barrington, Rhode Island, and the expert on wines, Mark, thank you How so much you? for joining us. Good to see you. So we're in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. Tuscany, I know, has some tremendous wines, yep. the Brunellos especially. The soil content and the weather plays a big role in the grapes. Terroir is always very important in winemaking. It's basically all of your factors. The wind, your water, what kind of weather you normally have. Um, they all play important roles in how the grapes are going to grow. So what would you recommend a good Tuscan wine to go with a beet salad? So that's going to be the Sonara. Phenomenal just for kind of that bright red fruit, mm -hmm. lean acidity to it, okay. um, and not really overly tannic. I do enjoy that one for just a lighter style, you know, salad or something. Okay. Do you recommend room temperature? Do we recommend it being a little on the cool side? I know red wines is a little tough to decide. Depends on the person. Mm -hmm. I do have mine chilled down a little little bit around, you know, you can be around 55, 58 degrees okay. and it's totally fine, but you can go up to room temperature. It's going to play into the aromatics. Okay. And a price range for this? The Sonara is $24.99. You should expect to see it around there. Okay. You can look at something like the Argiano Brunello di Montalcino. This is your powerhouse. This is going to be your showstopper. Very big, very full, but elegant. Red fruit all the way through with a nice long finish. And the price on Around that? 65. Okay. So, tell us what else is going on at Grapes and Grains. I know I look around and I see a tremendous selection of wines. So, mm -hmm. this is the kind of place you'd want to come to for information, mm -hmm. especially if you're having dinner parties or you just want to have a, a romantic dinner with two. We're happy to help any size party. So it's um, not the typical liquor store where you come in and you can't find someone to give you information other than... To we're here to help. Yeah. We're here to help. It's what we do. Um, we want to make sure that when you come in, you're comfortable. You, you're confident in your choices. If there's something that you're looking for, if there's something that you think is hard to find, we specialize in that. 
we can find it. We have a lot of New World wines. We have a fair amount of Italy we do a lot with. Um, France, we have a very expansive French uh, section. We're expanding on Portuguese. We have really interesting selections. We're not your average liquor store. We're here for the customer. We're here to give you the best experience you can in finding a bottle for an event, for an occasion, for just dinner with you and somebody special. That's what we're here for. Okay, that's Grapes and Grains in Barrington, Rhode Island. Come on down, ask for Mark, ask for just what kind of wine you're looking for. And I think <laughs> looking around, they have just about everything you can imagine. Thank you very much. Thank you. For over 37 years, Garden Hills Fruit and Deli in Cranston has been your neighborhood market. Garden Hills offers the highest quality choice certified Angus beef, the freshest produce, and delicious sandwiches served in the old world tradition. Stop in for all of your tailgating and playoff party needs. We have the freshest selections of meat ready for your grill. We can cater any event, pick up, or we'll deliver to you. Since 1981, Garden Hills Fruit and Deli has been a trip to Italy for your senses. My kitchen is completely empty now. We took everything out, we're down to studs, um, and so it was totally outdated, so we needed to do it over. Lived in our house for 20 years, and we're looking to start the process of thinking about remodeling the kitchen and trying to figure out how to make our dream a reality. What we liked was the one-stop service at Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath, where we didn't have to deal with some contractors, we didn't have to find a contractor. Everything was done in one place. Most people when they come in they want to know what's hot right now, what they should be thinking about putting into their projects. So here's some of the things that our clients are doing. I find most people want their homes to feel very welcoming and airy and spacious and so using clean lines is a really good way to achieve that. I think the support we had was wonderful from Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath both in the design stages and the actual execution. I would just recommend that somebody consider looking at Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath, especially if you're doing a big project like we did. You can do a custom hinge door, you can do a barn sliding door, or also a standard sliding door. And then the recessed niches are really great for storing all of your shampoo bottles. Those can be customized to any shape and size within your shower space to kind of go with the theme used in that bathroom. Also, the built-in benches are really nice. Sometimes you can put extra bottles on there, but also it's great for if you need to sit while you're showering or if you're shaving your legs, it's also great for that. We definitely wanted to know how much it really does cost to do a kitchen because um, you hear from all different kinds of people how much or how inexpensive it can be, but also how expensive it can be, and we did learn a lot from that today. The whole key is doing it with a, a group of individuals who are professionals. Uh, who actually would have um, answers right at right when you ask them, opposed to going online, searching and not knowing if this is a legit site or if it's not a legit site, or can you really trust the individual who's giving that information? We really like to break it down for people um, into baby steps, and then you can kind of see, you know, how you get to that finish line. In step one, you should just have a very open mind. You want to start by gathering ideas. Um, visiting showrooms like ours here today, um, you know, take a few minutes when we're done, make sure you really look in every nook and cranny in here. We try to build this showroom to give people a sense of all the different options that are out there and what's possible, so really take advantage of that. You've got the experience and there's a lot of things that you don't think about when you, you see some stuff online, you know, might not know how much it costs or what goes into it. This is much more in-depth. Uh, they lead you to the questions that you may want to ask and they answer them thoroughly and professionally. You come here, you talk to an actual person, you get their advice um, and they're, they're um, upfront with you. Obviously somebody who um, you know, has been through it a lot and ha can guide you through the process step by step because I think it's otherwise very overwhelming and they said some people can just be like, oh, forget it, I'll just do it next year, that's definitely me. I've been like, oh. I can't do it on my own. You can't just um, go out there and just look for the cabinet that you like or the countertop that you like. You have to start from the beginning and you have to write everything down, document everything, um, plan from top to bottom, the electrical work, the uh, lighting, um, 
everything, the floor, what goes in first. You know, you have to plan everything out. I'm glad I have somebody to help me do it because uh, I wouldn't be able to do it on my own. But I think it was uh, really about the planning, exactly the planning, what they were talking about, making sure you know exactly what they're doing, where they're putting the seam or this and that, that you might think, oh, I'll just leave that up to the electrician or the way the flooring goes this way versus that way. That You really have to have it all planned ahead of time even though you want to jump into it. And it's not as easy as it looks. Um, we have HGT, HGTV or DIY network out there that a lot of times you kind of watch 30 minutes of an episode and think, oh yeah, I can do my kitchen myself. Um, maybe you can, but I definitely would consult a professional, especially if you're doing any structural changes. Um, don't start knocking down a wall before contacting a professional. Um, especially in older homes, there's a lot of old homes in Rhode Island. You want to make sure you're meeting all of the code requirements, especially with electrical and plumbing, updating everything in there so it's up to date and up to code. Um, inspection and quality assurance is also important. You want to make sure that you have permits on your job site and that the inspector is coming to check in on the job and make sure everything is up to code throughout the job. We're very experienced in terms of the code requirements and safety regulations that need to be followed um, you know when we are building these spaces and we also have you know an award-winning team of designers here so um, you know we really offer people a lot of expertise and peace of mind in you know getting these projects done. Well, let's put it this way I've been saying it for the last 20 years that no one will touch my kitchen or bathroom except Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath. Welcome back to Flavors and Knowledge. We're wrapping up our uh, show this uh, time. We've picked two really nice dishes. Well, a little quick visit to Tuscany. Tuscany. We picked a dish, uh, uh, a country dish from, again, uh, the agricultural environment of Tuscany. Ribollita, cooked twice, baked in terracotta. A porridge type of a soup. It starts like a soup and then it turns into a porridge with the addition of stale bread. Good. Stale bread that it was made without salt because of the Tuscans have also pane right. uh, The trilogy of carrot, celery and onion, kale and savoy cabbage. We can add cannellini beans here, optional for people who don't like the protein. You can have it just the way it is. And my beet salad. This my, is your beet my. salad with the wonderfully cooked beets in lightly salted water, marinated the red onion, apple vinegar. Uh, what do we have there? Nice. Parsley, right? Yes, what else? Parsley. Do you remember? Uh, we put some seeds on it, All pumpkin right. seeds. Good. Scamorza it's cheese. Scamorza, which we added to yeah. top, so it doesn't stain. It's a, All right. It's like a good salad. And Thanks. that does it for us. <laughs> and uh, join us until we visit the next part of Italy. That's Probably right. will be Veneto. You Veneto? Like oh, I love Veneto. Well, let's get in yeah. a truck and drive. OK, and thank you for Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath Design. Beautiful design and showroom. This kitchen is so easy Absolutely. to use. Absolutely. And uh, we will see you next time. It's a dream for anyone. See you then. <laughs>